Hello friends. This is the continuation of lecture six of power system protection. In the last lecture, we have discussed about radial system protection and how relays could be coordinated for backup protection and primary protection. But it was just the concept. Now we will see how it is actually done using a numerical example. So the same system we have seen in the last lecture is used here for the numerical example. We have a generation source connected to a transformer of 345 kV delta by 34.5 kV star and uh, we have a breaker B1, breaker B2 and breaker B3, buses 1, 2 and 3, loads L1, L2 and L3 connected to bus, buses 1, 2 and 3 respectively. Now we are considering two different faults, fault locations P1 and P2. Uh, P1 is uh, to the immediate right side of breaker B3 and P2 is to the immediate right side of breaker B2. Breaker B2 is very near to bus 1 and breaker B3 is very near to bus 2. It is assumed like that. Okay. Uh, it does not seem like that uh, from the figure, but uh, uh, B2 is actually very near to bus 1 and B3 is very near to bus 2. Now we will see the problem. Uh, before going to the problem, we will see the data. So the data for this 60 hertz radial system is shown in tables 1, 2 and 3. In table 1, the maximum loads for each bus is shown. Let's go to the table 1 here. Buses 1, 2 and 3 and apparent power in MVA is given. So the normal maximum normal loading for bus 1 is 11 MVA, bus 2 is 4 MVA and bus 3 is 6 MVA. All the loads have the same lagging power factor 0 0.95. And in table 2, you are given the maximum fault current for buses 1, 2 and 3 as 3000, 2000 and 1000 respectively. Now, in table 3, you are given the breaker operating time as 5 cycles for all, all the breakers B1, B2 and B3 and the CT ratios 400 is to 5, 200 is to 5 and 200 is to 5 corresponding to breakers B1, B2 and B3 respectively. The relay used here is Westinghouse CO8 relay whose uh, relay characteristics, the inverse time characteristics were shown in one of the previous lectures. This is the one, the Westinghouse CO8 relay the characteristics for different time dial settings and the tap settings are shown on the right side. We will see it in detail while calculating the time dial setting and the current tap settings. Now let's see the connection of the relay and CT. The CT primary is connected to the power system where the actual lines are shown as three phase. IA, IB and IC are the currents through uh, the phases A, B and C. Now the CT secondaries are connected to the relay inputs and through the relay uh, it, it is connected to the breaker uh, circuit, breaker trip circuit. Now uh, let's see the questions which are asked. Select, you are asked to select the current tap settings TS and time dial settings TDS to protect the system from faults. Assume three CO8 relays for each circuit breaker one for each phase with a 0.3 second coordination time interval. What is 0.3 seconds coordination time interval? Here we have breakers B1, B2 and B3. So for a fault at P1, we know that B3 is a primary protection device and if B3 fails to act or if relay uh, corresponding to B3 fails to send a trip signal, then B2 should act after a time delay and B2 acts as a secondary backup protection for fault at P1. So the time delay between B3 and B2 is 0.3 seconds. Similarly, if we have a fault at P2, B1 acts as a backup protection and B2 is a primary protection. So the time delay between B2 and B1 is again 0.3 seconds. So that is what is the coordination time interval. Now, in addition to the coordination time interval, it is also given that 34.5 kV line to line voltage is a power system voltage during normal operation. Now future load growth is included in the table one. In table one, we have seen the maximum uh, loading 
in MBA. That is S1, S2 and S3 for buses 1, 2 and 3. Now we will go to the solution. So first we are going to select the tab settings such that release do not operate for maximum load currents because maximum load current is normal current. It's not fault current. So we are uh, we don't expect the relay to act for maximum load currents. So we, we, we are first finding the maximum load currents and we are we are selecting a tap setting above the maximum load current. Starting at B3, we are starting from breaker B3, the primary and secondary CT currents for maximum loads at L3. That is, we are going to the figure again. This is B3. Okay, for B3, what is the maximum current? Because B3 is assumed to be very near to bus 2. So the maximum current for bus 2, how will you find the maximum current for bus 2? That is found out from the table here. From bus 2, the maximum uh, MVA is 4, right? Maximum MVA is 4. This is B3, I think for B3, bus 3. Let me take one minute. here okay so for bus 3 for bus 3 um, we are initially uh, going to take bus 3 because we are finding l3 okay we are finding l3 so the normal current for normal uh, maximum current for l3 is il3 max il3 max can be found out from s3 max right s3 max is 6 mva so root 3 vl il is the apparent power so if you want to find the il s divided by root 3 vl you have to calculate. So S is 6 MVA. So 6 into 10 raised to 6 divided by line voltage is 34.5 into 10 raised to 3 because it is 34.5 kV. So root 3 VL is the denominator and S is the numerator. Root 3 VL IL equal, equals S. So uh, then we find the maximum normal current uh, for bus 3, which is maximum uh, load current uh, for load 3 which is 100.4 amps but this current corresponds to the primary CT current if you want to find the secondary CT current which is the relay input current you must use the CT ratio so 100.4 uh, 100 is the primary current primary current divided by CT ratio 200 by 5 which is equal to 2.51 amps it is given as 200 by 5 the CT ratio is given as 200 by 5 here you can see here for B3 the CT ratio is 200 by 5. Okay. Now, this uh, we got the current now 2.51 amps, but we don't want the relay to act for 2.51 amps. We want a current tap setting which is immediately above 2.51 amps, or the lowest current tap setting above 2.51 amps should be selected. So, we'll go to the characteristics of the Westinghouse CO8 relay. After 2.51 amps, we have 3 as the tap setting. So this is selected. 3 amperes current tap setting is selected for this one. Okay. So we are selecting for B3 relay, 3 amperes tap setting. Okay. Now for B2, we are moving from B3 to B2. For B2, what is the maximum load current? To find the maximum load current of B2, we must take both L3 and L2 here. Let's go to the figure here. B2. B2 in the sense this is the breaker B2. For this breaker, what is a normal current? We have to take L2 and L3, right? The sum of L2 and L3. So SL2 plus SL3 will give you the total MVA, maximum normal operating MVA. Divided by root 3 VL will give you the primary CT current. Then you use the CT ratio to find the secondary CT current. So here, 4 is the SL2, maximum MVA for L2 and maximum MVA for L3 is 6. So 10 MVA is the total. So 10 MVA divided by same voltage, 34.5 kV. So 34.5 into 10 ratio 3 into root 3, root 3 VL, which is equal to 167.3 amps, which is the primary CT current. Now, if we are going to find the secondary CT current. 
to find the secondary ct current we divide it by the ct ratio 200 by 5 we get 4.18 amps now we select the lowest uh, tap setting for um, lowest tap setting above 4.18 amps because we don't want the relay to act for 4.18 amps which is the normal operating current normal maximum operating current now um, which is the lowest tap setting above 4.18 amps which is 5 right above 4.18 it is 5 so 5 ampere tap setting is um, selected here for b2 relay okay 5 ampere tap setting for b2 now we are moving to b1 for b1 we have according to the location we have to take the sum of all the loads l1 l2 and l3 because b1 is b1 the point here here is b1 right so we have to take the normal to find the normal maximum operating uh, current we have to take the sum of all these l1 l2 and l3 now we are going to find that what is sl1 plus sl2 plus sl3 what is that value 11 plus 4 plus 5 15 plus 6 is 21 so 21 mva divided by 34.5 again the same voltage into root 3 which will give you 351.4 again we use the ct ratio here the ct ratio is different 400 by 5 you can go to the table and find it here 400 by 5 for b1 it is 400 by 5 for b3 we use 200 by 5 b2 also we use 200 by 5 for b1 we are using 400 by 5 so using 400 by 5 we are finding the secondary current secondary ct current which is 4.39 amps now what is the minimum tap setting above 4.39 amps which is again 5 amps from the westinghouse co8 relay 5 amps so now for all the breakers b1 b2 and b3 we have found the time settings right the tap settings these are the tap settings for b1 it is 3 not 5 it is, this is 3 then for b2 it is 5 for b3 it is 5 so that's all with the first part of the problem now we are going to find the time dial settings for the same problem